Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us here on Deeper. Again, your daily Bible study with a blessing to come together with Tim. And today we'll study the everlasting gospel. Now, this is certainly uh, too much of a subject to be able to accomplish in such a short time, but we want to at least leave you wanting to study more. And I pray that as we dig today in the Bible, in the God's Word, you may be able to learn and uh, just again be interested in be able to study and understand more what this everlasting gospel means and how to live that gospel in our lives. Uh, well, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us today to come together and to study your word. We want to be able to be transformed and also to be able to show others the truth that is written in your word. Allow us to be able to learn today something that will uh, be in our hearts as a, a a special treasure of joy that will give us uh, something to talk about to our friends. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Okay, Tim, so the everlasting gospel. Now, this is, of course, this phrase, the everlasting gospel, it's one that is found in one of my favorite books in the Bible, which is Revelation. And uh, this this phrase, the everlasting gospel, uh, taken from Revelation, it's really a, a beautiful experience that God wants us not to only understand in our minds, but to really experience in our hearts. Uh, mm-hmm. Many people today, you know, many believers, you know, in the world, uh, Christians, they believe ideologically, intellectually in Jesus, but yet they really have not accepted or embraced the experience of the gospel. And it's, it's almost, I, I almost feel that people sometimes want to have like a license of salvation but not the transforming grace of the gospel. So we're going to try to study briefly here what this means. And let's go uh, briefly, and let's just read the first verse there in Revelation 14, verse 6. And um, Tim, would you mind reading for us that verse? Sure. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Well, Tim, you have preached thousands of sermons about <laughs> this verse, and, you know, so have I. And yet, you know, we never stop to realize there's much more, you know, in, in this verse. Uh, and let me, you know, kind of talk with you a little bit about here, this verse specifically. When you read this verse, I don't know if it happened to you, but it certainly happened to me uh, when I was reading about this verse today. It, it, sort of, it talks about, you know, that the gospel, the everlasting gospel has to be preached, right, to, the, to every kindred tongue and people, but um, it, it sort of makes much more uh, compelling, I suppose, the fact that this first angel, which is, as we understand, is not a literal angel, is not an angel that, you know, is flying from heaven necessarily, it it's represents the people of God. But these people, to be able to preach the gospel, to preach that good news, that word they preach is bring good tidings, to preach those good tidings, these angel, this messenger, has, in other, no, notice that, has the everlasting gospel. It's not that it, pos- it, it sort of, you know, carries it with you, but it actually has. It's, it's almost like it, it belongs to this, to this messenger. Uh, why do you think this is important? Have you ever thought about this? Yeah, it really is an important point. Um, especially, I know we're going to get to this verse in a minute, but the next verse in verse 7 really explains what it means to have that gospel. Uh, one of the clearest explanations really in the whole Bible of what it means to live the gospel. Uh, And so certainly uh, the point you're making is really uh, a good one and important for us to recognize that to have the gospel, as you said, does not mean something that I have mentally assented to only or signed the card, the club card, so to speak, but it really means that uh, Christ is living within me and I'm a different person now than I was before. Amen. Now, since we're talking about the everlasting gospel, and I know we want to answer the the question, as you mentioned, next verse, but before we go to the next verse, I I kind of want to, taking the lesson that we were, you know, basing this off, 
they added this verse, which the world knows, the most famous verse in the Bible, which is John 3.16. Now, briefly, let's go there for a minute. Uh, if you don't mind following me along there, uh, Tim, and those that are listening to us. Let's go to John 3, and let's start verse 16. But let's not stop just at verse 16, because I think sometimes we don't understand. We think that the gospel, the good news is Christ coming for us and, you know, dying and, and saving us from sin. But let's kind of see what these verses kind of tell us about the gospel. Uh, let's go, th- uh, if you can read for us, 316 all the way through 21. Okay, here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Quite a power-packed passage there, David. Of course, and here you actually understand what this word believe, you know, in verse 16, that everybody says, I believe in Jesus Christ, so I can have everlasting life. But here, the key word here is have everlasting life. We think that Believing Christ will give me life eternal. After I die, I go to heaven. That's what people think. But when you actually understand the concept in the in in these, in, when you start start understanding or listening or reading the context of this verse, when Jesus says that you know that anyone that believe it, and and then he starts explaining what believing means. Believing means that you are not condemned. That you actually come to the light. You know that you believe in Christ and you reject. I mean, you you accept the light, and this light moves in your life, makes you do the deeds that are not reproved. So it's it's a power of God to enable you to obey, to be able to be uh, experience that salvation from today. The everlasting salvation is not something in the future, but starts today in your life mm-hmm. when you are hidden Christ. Yes, your life is eternal because even if you die, if your body dies, what, what's going to happen? You're going to be saved and you're going to be in heaven. So it's it's really a, an aspect of starting to have that everlasting life today, that everlasting gospel today. So now let's briefly, as we're going running out of time, let's go to back to Revelation 17, I mean 14, 7. And now that we set up that, you know, believing in Jesus, the believe the gospel means to have the light to believe in him and that the deeds may be manifested, uh, that we are brought or wrought by God, then we can understand why and this message is a warning. Let's go to verse seven. Yeah. Uh, And I'll just say this, back in John chapter three, Jesus talks about condemnation and judgment uh, in those Mm -hmm. passages we just read. And we see that appearing here in verse seven in Revelation. Uh, so clearly, uh, as we're, we're showing here, John chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 14 have many connections with each other. Uh, so here's Revelation 14 verse 7, where we read what it means to do the truth or to come to the light or to believe in Jesus or to have this everlasting gospel. And the angel said with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. These are practical uh, things that we do in our lives, right? Uh, These are uh, uh, ways that we live the gospel. And, you know, exactly, Tim. I mean, this is the ways, the practical ways, and and this is important. Many people fear when you talk about judgment, we all hear the word and we don't like it. (laughs) It almost seems that when you speak, when I speak the judgment, when you do it, for example, a even you're planning an evangelistic crusade or something, and you want to talk about the judgment, it's one of those uh, topics that are usually not accepted, not embraced, divisive for many people, and they, a lot of them, they don't want to hear anymore, you know, the, what you have to say. Mm-hmm. And so it happens that when we talk about the gospel, and even in, 
you know, to those that are, have been hearing about this aspect of the judgment, even today, a lot of people are afraid of it. And, and I think that one of the reasons that is really yeah, is a fearful experience is because people have not the experience of the gospel in their lives. No, notice this important aspect of the first angel's message. The first angel has the everlasting gospel. It has an experience of the gospel. So when he goes and teaches to others and preaches the good news, now how can be good news judgment, you may say, right? I mean, <laughs> if, if, if he's going to preach to the world good tidings, why is it that verse 7, what he's saying, seems apparently, <laughs> you know, uh, as, as a negative thing, you know, fear God, the judgment's coming. But really, it's because the experience, when you have the experience of the gospel, you're living a life hid in Christ, you have the, re- the, the requirement to bring the truth of what the gospel is and also what the judgment is that will bring people and a concept that, yes, if I, hid my, if I hide my life in Christ, if I accept Christ as my personal Savior and I accept his interceding for me today, well, I am living eternally. I have this everlasting life in Christ and the judgment will end. The everlasting gospel will never finish. So, you know, to, to us that if you're, if you're living in Christ, if you're holding on to the gospel of Christ, you have the experience of Christ in you. Uh, to me, the, the gospel, the judgment is, is, is a great news because you're, t- you're, you're at one step closer to really receiving the eternal life, you know, the, the glorification. Yeah, you oh, know? We, should, we should add also that the judgment is when, or th- it's, it's through judgment that Jesus redeems his people. Isaiah 1 verse 27 it talks about God's people being redeemed in judgment. Absolutely, It was through the judgments that fell on Egypt that God brought out the Israelites. It's in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, it is in the time of judgment that the saints are, are saved from the power of the little horn. So we often think of judgment as a negative word, but in the Bible, it's that is not always the case. Judgment is also the time in which... Um, and the, and the way through which God redeems and ultimately saves his people and pulls them out of the power of sin. Ex- exactly. Amen to that. And this is, you know, why the gospel becomes, a, you know, the blessing gospel becomes an experience that it's a living experience. It's, it's not something you just think intellectually, as we mentioned, but it really allows you to stand uh, or, or, or be able to, to come out of this judgment uh, untouched because Guess what? Christ has covered you. You are hid in Christ. Your life, you have confessed your sins to the Lord. You live the experience of the gospel. You are connected, united with Jesus. There's no condemnation to you. As, as we mentioned in John 3, uh, you know, there's no condemnation. Christ did not come to condemn the world. The problem is that when men reject the light, and this is what the judgment is fearful for them that reject the light, reject Christ, you will receive punishment. You will receive the the sad, you know, end to the sin problem because God has to get rid of sin. But if you have accepted Christ and you're embracing this experience, you're uh, you're hidden in the Lord. You are uh, really embracing the, the power of God, the gospel in your life. You believe that God can give you the power to obey to to be able to have victory. Then the judgment will only prove that you are worthy to be with Christ. I I think this is good news, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I believe. And this is why exactly we believe that, you know, when we see this, um, you know, Tim, and I think that we have talked about this before, and, and I know we have preached a little bit about this as well, but it's, it's a beautiful experience when you study that God has a plan of redemption, a plan of salvation, that it's really uh, the perfect plan to redeem us and save us from sin and to grant us to sit with the Lord and with Christ when he comes back. Well, today we have finished. We expect to see you tomorrow here on Deeper. May God bless you. And until then, may you be blessed. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.